Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Get Day Taylor from Community Matters 2. I got an important message for you. Every 10 years required by Constitution that the U.S. Census Bureau goes out and counts the community. This literally determines how millions of dollars are distributed throughout our community. These dollars go to uh, special education, uh, technology in classrooms, um, lunch programs. It's extremely important that you're counted. And if you don't want to believe me, you can believe everybody else. Hello, make sure you do your 2020 census and be counted. Hey guys, don't forget to do your 2020 census and be counted. Make sure you do your 2020 census and be counted. Young people, your response matters. Fill out your census and be counted. Listen, remember to do your 2020 census. It's very important. And be counted. Make the difference. 2020 census? Better be counted. Make sure you do your 2020 census and be counted. Be counted. Be counted. Deadline September 30th. So you've seen everybody's telling you, you got to be counted. So they actually have census workers going around door to door, but you don't have to wait for that. You can go to my2020census.gov right now, fill it out. It takes about 10 minutes and all your personal information being kept confidential. So please be counted. Be counted. Be counted. Be counted. Be counted. Be counted. Good afternoon. Thanks uh, for uh, joining us. It is 3.30, so we're going to get uh, started. Uh, you just saw a great uh, video uh, put together as part of our complete count effort. Uh, as you likely know, uh, we are in the midst of a uh, national census. The Constitution requires uh, the federal government engage uh, in counting all residents, and uh, uh, we've, uh, uh, well, we're well on our way uh, in that process. I want to thank our complete count committee, uh, led uh, by John Penny, uh, and uh, we're encouraging you uh, to be counted. So if you have not yet completed your census form, uh, one of two things uh, uh, can happen immediately. You can go to 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov, and fill out your uh, census information. Uh, remember uh, that this information is uh, not all that probing, and it is confidential. In fact, uh, those who take the count uh, are sworn, in fact, to uh, not release that information for years, and, and there's a penalty of imprisonment if they do. So uh, it is uh, confidential information that the federal government then uses uh, for a whole host of um, uh, uh, apportionment, if you will. Uh, keep in mind, uh, so number one, 2020census.gov. You can complete uh, your census form online. Otherwise, uh, there are census workers uh, who are uh, going door to door, so be aware of that. Uh, they're, they have a face covering or mask. Uh, uh, they'll also have identification, uh, and they may be coming to your home uh, in order to get, uh, get you counted. Now, why is the census important? I know uh, you probably uh, understand or know this, but uh, from uh, first, the federal government apportions federal dollars, so resources, our community development block grant funding, uh, uh, in infrastructure investment, transportation dollars, uh, all uh, directed based on uh, census data. So just completing that means uh, that Dutchess County is a stronger position uh, to receive the federal support uh, that it deserves. And, and just keep in mind, if we're not getting it, someone else is. So it's not like uh, we're, you know, uh, we're saying, well, let's, uh, let's hoard these dollars. Uh, the federal government will divide it up based on their budgets, but it is based on census data. So that's important. Uh, secondly, uh, although most importantly, this is how uh, Congress and, and state legislatures and our own county legislature uh, is uh, redistricted. So based on population, right, you know, uh, uh, legislative districts are carved up. And uh, if we lose those numbers, we don't count you, uh, then we lose representation in Congress, in the state legislature. And uh, for those of you uh, who have that concern, uh, and, and I do, uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, this is the counterbalance, if you will, to other parts of the state of New York. So ensuring that we're counted, all of us, uh, means that we have adequate representation in the state legislature. It will mean 
when Dutchess County uh, uh, begins its reapportionment process next year, uh, that the county legislature be carved up based on population. So very, very important uh, that you be counted. Uh, and uh, we ask you to participate uh, in our uh, count effort. So 2020census.gov, and of course you can always visit duchessny.gov for more information. Let's jump right into our dashboard numbers. Uh, Want to get you up to date on that. Uh, we have now conducted over 123,616 tests. I will say this up front. We continue to encourage you to be tested. If you've come into contact with someone who may have contracted the disease or feel you have it yourself, uh, we recognize uh, that the uh, CDC is uh, changing some of its testing recommendations. We do not endorse that generalized uh, uh, direction. We believe that if, you've if you may have come into contact with someone who's transmitted the disease, uh, we suggest that you do be tested. Now, why is that important? Not only, obviously, for your own personal health, uh, but also from, from our perspective, uh, it's the way in which we get to measure how we're doing region-wide, statewide. And so for uh, school districts to reopen and schools to be open, for activities to, to be engaged in, having that positivity rate, uh, which is, is really uh, the number of people who test positive versus divided uh, into or by the number of total tests conducted on any given day, that is the positivity rate. That number gives us a good indication of where we are. So we want you to be tested if you feel like you've contracted the disease or come into contact with somebody who has. 123,000 tests conducted these last several months, 4,790 total confirmed cases. Uh, we are monitoring 264 active cases as of today with 10 individuals hospitalized. I'm going to get to, to that because that is an increase, both uh, Active cases and hospitalizations are up slightly uh, these last, uh, this last week. Uh, 153 people have succumbed to the disease, as, as you know. That is, has not increased uh, in the last several weeks, but of course uh, we continue uh, to monitor. Uh, we in the region uh, have uh, tracked a 1% uh, positivity rate or infection rate. Uh, that uh, remains basically the number statewide. Certain regions a little bit higher, some regions a little bit lower. Uh, but we've been just at that 1%. And again, that's the total number of tests uh, divided by or in, divided into uh, any, any number of positive tests on, on any given day. So uh, 264 active cases, 10 hospitalizations, slight increase in this last week. Um, I want to be, uh, I, I, I be clear, uh, we are not tracking a, in quotes, cluster, although uh, the definition of such uh, is, is uh, uh, different to, to everybody. Uh, but we're not pointing to an area of alarm or concern. We are seeing some increase in total cases uh, based on people traveling, and that is true of traveling to other states, coming back. Uh, we clearly have seen some increase there. Uh, individuals returning uh, from and, and, and to college campuses, couple, uh, a couple cases uh, there. And so, you know, on any given day, we expect to see that fluctuation. Uh, it is when that becomes a trend that it concerns us. It does not yet concern uh, the public health officials locally. We will monitor. It is not alarming, uh, but we do want to be aware uh, that as activities engage, as, as activities increase, and people engage in sort of normal and you know active uh, living, uh, there there are going to be uh, new cases, and they are going uh, to uh, increase. Now um, we're not seeing that trend. Uh, we're just seeing day to day. Uh, increase, decrease. In fact, I think we were down to, to seven or, or, or eight uh, hospitalizations. We're back up to 10. It is likely we come back down again as we monitor those. So be aware of that. We're not, uh, we don't have, this is not a point of, uh, of worry, uh, but we just want to be clear that, that we are going to continue to see these fluctuations. And if they become a trend, that is when uh, the public health officials will be uh, the most uh, concerned. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we just ask you to remain vigilant. Uh, there are still steps that ought to be taken. Again, again uh, engage in that physical distancing uh, as, as appropriate. If you cannot, uh, and certainly when, when it's uh, necessary and appropriate, wear a face mask, wear a, wear a mask, wear a face covering. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, steps to slow uh, the transmission of the disease. And uh, as my wife uh, reminds me all the time, uh, it's funny that we have to remind people to wash their hands, but. Don't forget, uh, personal steps like that uh, slow the transmission of any infectious disease, and of course this one uh, as well. Uh, the governor uh, today uh, um, uh, announced uh, some changes to the travel advisory. We want you to be aware, and again, I know that people choose to follow this or not, but we are asking you 
to follow the travel advisory guidance. Uh, several locations, uh, several states were taken off the list, and we have a new territory on the list. So Alaska, Arizona, Delaware, Maryland, and Montana are off the list. Uh, and uh, there are 31 total uh, states and territories now on the list with Guam being added. And I know that that devastates you. You were going to Guam. They hate when I talk to them. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, uh, Guam has been added to the list, travel advisory. Remember, I understand uh, there are some people who just don't, don't agree with this and don't believe in this, but it does come uh, with an expectation that if you travel to those locations for any period of time, when you come back to complete this uh, travel advisory form, uh, failure to do so could lead the state of New York to issue as much as a $2,000 fine. But again, uh, the goal here is if you've traveled to those locations, uh, you are uh, to quarantine for uh, 14 days to, to ensure the, uh, that you have not contracted and then ultimately uh, keep you from transmitting the disease. So as you make those choices, remember that is the expectation uh, of the state of New York, New Jersey, and uh, Connecticut. So uh, we announced uh, last week uh, that uh, uh, gyms uh, were now permitted to open. The state has uh, relieved some of the restrictions on gyms. They could open as of Monday of this week. Uh, Dutchess County assembled a response team. This is not ordinarily the responsibilities of the uh, Behavioral and Community Health Department. We don't inspect gymnasiums, or gymnasiums, we don't expect, inspect gyms and, and fitness centers. Uh, but uh, we, we have a team uh, that's been working uh, on, on responding. So, um, in fact, a gym can open prior to inspection. Uh, we have two weeks uh, from opening uh, to conduct that inspection, and uh, we are conducting them as uh, they come in. So uh, we're uh, very grateful to the public health folks who have been working on that. Uh, we uh, also have been working with municipalities, building and code inspectors, uh, to be sure we're on top of that. So uh, uh, gyms uh, can reopen and proceed. If you have a question, write it in the comment section below the live stream. Happy to get to as many as we can uh, this afternoon. Um, uh, what, Anna, what do you say to the parents who demand full-time in-person school five days per week? Um, well, I, I, I say that I feel for you, uh, but uh, the districts are, are, are creating their own plans. Those are within the construct and guidance of the state of New York. Dutchess County and county government does not have uh, direct oversight over school districts. We're providing uh, what guidance uh, we can. We have a rapid response team for school districts. But school districts are permitted to make those decisions, and, and quite frankly, uh, we'll be making them with all of you. And, and for every person who wants uh, uh, them open full time, there are equal, if not as many, uh, if not more, uh, who want some uh, some variation. I understand the frustration. Uh, we've developed uh, uh, your uh, school supply list for 2021, and, and I don't mean it to be fu uh, funny, uh, but you know, here, uh, if you see uh, above my shoulder there. Uh, the 2020 uh, supply list. Uh, it starts with patience and ends with kindness. Uh, those things are infectious too. So I understand the, the, the real uh, frustration that people have. We know that people want uh, to get back uh, to a school setting. I certainly um, was comfortable sending my kids uh, to Red Hook. Red Hook Schools was going to have um, an in-person program. They, they decided to delay that uh, until I think uh, the first week of October. Uh, but again, uh, Dutchess County Health Department providing uh, a, a, a real st support structure to school districts. We have our rapid response team. We have uh, rapid testing and priority testing thanks to Pulse MD for school districts. We're looking at a, a wider purchase of, of rapid tests if those become necessary. Uh, and again, uh, responding with a rapid response team to potential uh, uh, cases in a school district. I feel for you, believe me, uh, I, and, and I know many school teachers who want to be back in a position of providing uh, in-person school uh, uh, and education. We know that there's no substitution for that uh, and uh, we're hopeful as we proceed that school districts uh, will uh, have the tools that they, can, they would need to, to be open. We'll continue to promote and support that. Uh, but again, those decisions are made by school districts with uh, you as parents and taxpayers and uh, under the guidance of the state of New York. Uh, we'll continue to provide them uh, what support uh, we can. Uh, Karen, is asking about uh, long-term care facilities. Um, we recognize that the uh, uh, visit it, visitation uh, for nursing homes, long-term care facilities, very challenged. The state has pr provided guidance. Those, that guidance is a bit 
um, uh, uh, challenging to meet. And of course, uh, nursing homes themselves have their, their own level of concern regarding disease uh, spread. We believe that there are safe ways to provide visitation. We're hopeful uh, that that can be accommodated. Uh, we'll continue to encourage the state. But uh, again, this is a state of New York decision, and we would encourage you to reach out to your state legislator, uh, anyone uh, in state government who uh, 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 represents us uh, is uh, certainly in a position to make that case. We'll continue to argue that. Uh, we have a good team working with long-term care facilities and nursing homes. Uh, been uh, just a, a terrific working relationship, but we recognize the challenge of not being able to visit a loved one. Not only are you frustrated and, and certainly saddened by it, but of course uh, that loved one uh, in, in, the, in the nursing home or long-term long care facility uh, equally uh, uh, saddened, angry, confused. Uh, and that's uh, something that needs to be confronted. We'll continue to, uh, to, to promote uh, that visitation uh, and support nursing homes and long-term care facilities with resources and support uh, to make that happen. But at the end of the day, it is a decision that gets made uh, by the state of New York with them. They regulate those facilities. So, um, Joseph, if an employee needs time off for homeschooling because schools aren't opening, can the business hire someone to replace them? Uh, so, um, uh, there are certain protections that are provided to individuals. Uh, I don't think it's as broad as, it, I know it's not as broad as it once was. Uh, so, uh, certainly employers should be as accommodating as possible. I know we are. Uh, we're trying to provide the greatest degree of latitude to our employees, uh, but have the, have the expectation that the work still gets done. Uh, so, employers are asked to, to, to be as accommodating as possible. Uh, and there are certain protections that are in place. Again, if you have a specific question regarding an employer or a particular uh, situation, uh, we're happy to try to get you an answer. You can visit duchessny.gov or email us uh, when you visit the website, and we'll try to give you some direction. Uh, but there are, uh, you know, there are certain expectations, and frankly, that's one of the challenges that exists when schools don't reopen, and that is you know, uh, uh, providing for adequate uh, child care. And we understand the challenge. And um, uh, again, uh, uh, there are certain protections in place, uh, but they are uh, more specific to every situation, not a blanket uh, scenario. Uh, if you're quarantined or you test positive, there's certain protections uh, and uh, there are certain accommodations that are supposed to be made, but it's not a generic uh, one-size-fits-all answer, so we're happy to try to give you some direction. Uh, Patricia, when will wedding venues increase capacity? Still no answer uh, uh, from uh, the state of New York on theaters uh, or indoor wedding uh, venues. Wedding venues can function at 50 people for a ceremony. Uh, they, they can open for 50% capacity if they, have, uh, if they have a restaurant setting, but for an actual wedding, the state of New York has been very aggressive. Um, I don't necessarily agree, but the state has been very clear. Wedding venues, no direction as of this time. 50 people is the limit for indoor uh, weddings and, 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 and wedding venues. I know there are a number who are accommodating that, uh, but there's been no change at the state level. We'll continue to advocate, uh, but as of this point, uh, no change in that policy on uh, wedding venues or uh, theaters. Cecilia, how are people tracked and fined for not observing travel, travel van, ban? It is voluntary. Uh, there is not a means to track people uh, for traveling. Uh, there is a form online. There's also a complaint form online. If you're aware of somebody that uh, has traveled and you have a degree of concern, you're welcome. Uh, we ask you not to go around taking pictures of people. I've said this many, many times. Please uh, don't uh, take those actions into your own hand. But if you have a degree of concern, you can go online. You can submit a, re uh, a complaint regarding uh, uh, somebody who may not be following the travel advisory, and then the state of New York will respond. So uh, again, it's voluntary. Uh, when, you, when you travel, you're requested to complete this form online. If you do not, you are subject to as much as a $2,000 fine. Once you've completed that form, however, uh, local health departments and the state health department are aware uh, of that information being follow, uh, being filed, and then it is a voluntary uh, quarantine. Uh, and I'm smiling because it's voluntary unless you choose not to do it, in which case the state does reserve the right to impose a mandatory quarantine. And again, uh, we want everyone to be safe. Listen, be considerate of one another. Uh, if you're making those travel arrangements and you're taking those, uh, making those decisions to do that, just be considerate that uh, we, we don't want to spread the disease. Uh, and to the extent you can, um, uh, obviously, we, we, well, not the extent you can, we, we want you to comply with uh, following the travel advisory, and that information is online. 
Heather, when can we drink in a bar without eating? Um, well, um, the state still expects that, uh, that if you're at a, a bar setting, that that includes uh, a meal. Um, that is, now again, I've said this all along, uh, it is a ridiculous means to an important end. The end is we don't want large con uh, um, congregation bar settings. We don't. And we know the transmission of the disease in close proximity when you're sort of casual and uh, you know, interacting with one another. We know that that happens, and we just don't want to be in a position where the curve is no longer flat. So I don't happen to agree that you create these new rules uh, that people find humorous or not enforceable in order to get to the means. You're just very blunt with people. So our position is, uh, uh, again, adhere to the expectation that, that it's, uh, again, uh, uh, not large gatherings. We want the 50% capacity adhered to in restaurants. We, it's just something that we, we expect at this point in time. Currently, the state does expect that if you're at a bar, you get served food, and that food needs to be something of substance. Now, I do want to clarify that uh, buffalo wings are uh, a meal of substance. The state of New York has said that. I'm, I'm only laughing because I know uh, a few weeks ago the governor said it wasn't, and then by that night uh, the state of New York said, no, it actually is. Listen, at the end of the day, um, uh, restaurants and bars, we, we're working, we want to work with you to be creative. Uh, we certainly want to support you to stay open. The state of New York still has not changed that expectation. And from our perspective, it, you know, we don't happen to think that using a, you know, sort of this uh, un, unusual rule is a way to get to the goal. The goal is slow the transmission, smaller groups, less capacity, uh, and we'll get through this. So no change in that either. Deborah, someone told me that's usually a great way to start a sentence. Um, I think I know who Deborah is, and I, I'm not ridiculing. Somebody told me the governor has canceled Halloween. Is that true? Um, as much as it would benefit me to say yes, yes, in fact, he has. Uh, there is uh, not yet any guidance on Halloween at the end of October. And I would suggest to you that um, uh, it is highly unlikely that there'd be a carte blanche sort of everybody stay home for Halloween. I think that there would be the expectation that people adhere to certain safety precautions. But no, there has been no decision to, in quotes, cancel Halloween. Um, uh, but um, uh, we'll keep you posted as we get closer to uh, the end of October. The hope would be that we have controlled the transmission and that we can go about our business but be sensitive to the fact that you don't want to be in close proximity to one another. And as my wife uh, uh, has joked with me, what, is it, what, what, would, what does Halloween look like while you're wearing a mask on your mask? And so um, the goal here is uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, and um, not not as of yet, and and I, I know there's a lot of people who, who we, we all we all heard lots of stories, um, uh, but uh, the governor has not uh, canceled Halloween, and um, I I trust he's not canceling Christmas uh, or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa either. But as of this point, in all seriousness, no no guidance on Halloween, and that's the, what we would expect, just as we would for September 11th and for Memorial Day and for Fourth of July. We expect there will be some basic guidance that we'd all ask that we adhere to and we accommodate uh, to ensure that we slow the transmission of the disease. Nancy, are churches open? Well, churches may open. They, they actually come in uh, months, uh, almost two months ago, I think actually two months ago, they could have opened. Churches uh, need to function at 50% interior capacity, and then exterior, it's basically social distancing if they, if they have outside services. You could do drive-in uh, drive or drive-up uh, services or uh, um, um, spacing out outside. Inside is 50% capacity. Our health department conducted a meeting with faith leaders uh, about a month ago, provided them some guidance and, and some help in making some choices about what you can and shouldn't do uh, inside. But churches, houses of worship are open at 50% uh, capacity. Richard, are there special plans for Election Day? Good question, and um, I'll give you a, a brief rundown now. Uh, but next week, uh, we're going to do a tutorial on uh, voting in New York State. A couple things. One. Um, uh, New York State has uh, provided early voting, so that is an option uh, if you are registered to vote. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll go through all the details next week with you. Uh, weren't prepared to, to get into every finite detail today. But if you wish to vote, there are several polling sites open ahead of Election Day, nine days ahead of Election Day. They actually all occur after the last of the presidential debates. I offer that as a means of being sure you've got the opportunity to listen to the candidates and can make a conclusion. Early voting begins at several locations around the county. Doesn't matter where you're registered, you can go to any one of those locations and vote as many as uh, eight or nine days ahead of election day. Uh, we'll provide you that information. You also now have the right uh, to what's called no fault uh, absentee balloting. What that means is 
uh, you will be sent an application to vote absentee. You do not need to vote absentee, but if you wish to, there is no reason. Uh, you do not have to be, uh, uh, you, you don't have to have some special reason, just simply not wanting to go to the polls. You complete that absentee ballot form. That absentee ballot application goes to the Dutchess County Board of Elections. The staff there, um, both parties represented in one office. Uh, it's quite the interesting experience. They, they work well together, but, you know, they checks and balances. And they'll review that application. Assuming that you've met the registration requirements, you will be sent a ballot. That ballot will be sent to you in the mail by post workers who are diligent uh, in providing you that, that by mail. You'll get that, you'll get that ballot. You'll fill out that ballot. It comes with a few uh, envelopes. And the reason that happens is to make sure that there's, your anonymity is protected when they ultimately open that ballot, that envelope. You'll then mail that back in, and the Dutchess County Board of Elections uh, will, will count it. Uh, I will say this up front. Uh, the integrity of, Dutchess, uh, of, uh, of our absentee ballot system in this state and in, in, and in Dutchess County, I'll say specifically, uh, is held to the highest standard. Uh, they are working every day to ensure uh, that your vote is counted. And you can trust the absentee ballot system here in this community. You can trust voting early here in this community. And if you feel that you wish to, your third option is to show up on Election Day and vote in your local election district. Again keeping in mind that if you're voting in person, you'll be asked to wear a face covering, and there may be some delay, and you'll want to, to give yourself some time. Uh, but we have experience in this state, and certainly we know in this region uh, what absentee balloting looks like. We've done, this is the second year of early voting. We're prepared for that. Uh, in fact, the Board of Elections conducted that for primary of, uh, voting. The only thing I will tell you is if you expect in a close race to get the final results on election night, you are going to be up for a long time. Uh, it is absolutely certain that the ability to count both absentee, early voting, although they'll be, they'll be in the machines uh, when, when, when we close down on, uh, on election day, and the election day ballots, uh, along with what are called affidavit ballots, it's just going to take some time. So if it's a close race, it is unlikely that you're going to get the results on election night. Uh, and we would expect that, in fact, you'll, you'll hear those results uh, within hopefully a few days. Uh, but uh, uh, we've seen this go on for a week or two uh, to count all the ballots. And I'll just say that, again, the goal here is to make sure every ballot's counted and every vote is counted. So if they need some time to do that, it is, it is perfectly okay as long as the integrity of the ballot is protected, the integrity of your vote is protected. And I promise you, uh, the Dutchess County Board of Elections and their staff uh, are doing everything possible to work with the Postal Service, to work with our team, to print the, the, the information, to make sure uh, that the integrity of, election, of, of, of this uh, country's elections here in this county uh, is, uh, is protected and held to the highest standard. So I offer that because I think it's worth saying. If you have a question, write it down in the comment section below. Uh, happy uh, to get to as many as uh, we can. Dutchess County secured a, uh, a grant uh, that uh, we're looking for some assistance. Uh, if you're interested in coming to work uh, for Dutchess County, it's one of the few position, one of the few uh, uh, employment opportunities that we will have uh, uh, this year. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, we're looking for public health advisors. Um, we uh, you are expected to have some education and experience in nursing, social work, or health education, or some health related field. Salary is sixty two thousand dollars a year. Uh, and visit duchessny.gov/jobs. Duchessny.gov/jobs for information to apply. These positions are important to our response to COVID nineteen, uh, uh, engaging in the monitoring and um, uh, support. Uh, to meet our responsibilities to respond to COVID-19, but also flu, Lyme, opioids, and more. So uh, we are encouraging, if you're interested, uh, five positions available, $62,000. We were able to uh, provide these opportunities through a grant that we secured. Uh, and again, visit duchessny.gov. I mentioned what we were doing for school districts. Let's run through that very quickly again. Uh, so as school districts finalized, and you are aware of their uh, opening plans, uh, we have uh, worked with them over school districts over the last several weeks to provide support. The Dutchess County Department of Behavioral and Community Health is working closely with school districts. Uh, we've provided guidance about testing availability. As I mentioned, uh, have coordinated uh, a, uh, um, a priority testing program uh, with uh, Pulse MD in the town of Poughkeepsie. Uh, we've uh, established that for rapid testing, and this will allow 
uh, uh, for, for BCH, our department, to partner with school districts to get that rapid response uh, going. We have a rapid response team. In effect, if there's a positive case or, pr or a presumed positive case, we're able to respond uh, very rapidly uh, and uh, work uh, with uh, school districts. So uh, we are also looking at bulk rapid testing uh, purchase, so actually buying a significant amount of tests. Uh, in fact, uh, Ulster County is asked to uh, piggyback on our uh, purchase, so hopefully we'll have access to a large uh, if you will, supply of rapid tests. These are not, uh, just keep in mind, the, the efficacy of uh, rapid testing, not as good as the traditional diagnostic testing, but it will give us an indication. Uh, in particular, if, you, if it does come back positive, it is likely you've tested positive. Uh, and, and so uh, we're hopeful to get access uh, to a pool uh, and a supply of uh, those uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, we've hosted an online uh, uh, training program for school nurses and uh, are continuing to provide guidance uh, to the, all of them as well. Denise, who do I contact to volunteer with elections? Well, um, I'll tell you, uh, there may be, in fact, some employment opportunities at the Board of Elections, so that's also uh, something that you should be aware of. You should visit Duchess, uh, is it still Duchess Elections? Or DuchessNY.gov and then go to the elections and then type in elections or Board of Elections in the search field and uh, you'll be directed uh, to uh, the Dutchess County Board of Elections. If you're interested in volunteering for a campaign uh, or some uh, uh, committee, uh, you'll have to do that locally. Uh, you can simply uh, reach out to an existing cam can candidate or campaign team uh, and there are volunteer opportunities to be poll watchers. Those are assigned by the campaigns or by the political parties. You should reach out to those. I, I'm not actually permitted to give you that direction at this point, uh, but other than you should uh, reach out to uh, uh, any candidate of choice uh, or a political party if you, if you choose to support one or be a part of one. And they, they do have poll watcher opportunities, but if you'd like to actually engage uh, in being a part of the elections, uh, reach out to the Dutchess County Board of Elections and they'll provide you uh, some contact information. If you have a question, write it below in the comment section of the, uh, uh, below the live stream. Uh, we'll, uh, we've covered just about everything. Wanted to acknowledge today uh, we hosted our youth employment program. Uh, we held a virtual summit, very exciting, 150 uh, participants. Uh, Want to thank Senator Serino. Uh, she, uh, and I, I guess she and I, uh, did uh, advocate uh, with the state to release uh, some dollars that uh, helped uh, to uh, have uh, uh, to help to ensure that we were able to continue our youth and our summer youth employment program. Uh, thanking, uh, thankful to Louise McLaughlin, McLaughlin, uh, who runs uh, our uh, youth employment program as part of uh, her responsibilities at the Workforce Investment Board, our WIB. Uh, and uh, just very grateful to the to the kids, uh, young people, <laughs> who uh, participated, uh, really showed their resilience, uh, really helped out, uh, and I think uh, gained, we, we know, gained a great deal of experience. And today's uh, summit uh, was very, very uh, uh, exciting and useful, and uh, we're happy to celebrate their uh, successes. If you have a question, type it in the uh, feed below, in the comment uh, below the live feed. Otherwise, we're going to close up in a minute. Uh, I want to again remind you that uh, what we'll do next week is uh, provide you some uh, more detailed <clears throat> uh, instructions on what uh, voting looks like in the state of New York and in Dutchess County in 2020. I want to assure you again, every step is being taken uh, to protect the integrity of the vote. Uh, we are working, uh, our Board of Elections works hand in hand, and, let me, and I'll tell you that postal workers are very earnest uh, in processing those absentee ballot applications, getting them uh, through the system and to uh, the Board of Elections and ultimately uh, absentee balloting. So you'll have, again, that opportunity to vote absentee. You'll get an absentee application. You can fill that out, and then you'll be sent to ballot. Uh, you'll be able to vote early uh, in, uh, across the state of New York, but of course that exists here. Uh, you'll see when you visit duchessny.gov, the poll sites for early voting. You do not need to live near that poll site. No matter where you are as a registered voter in Dutchess County, you can go to any one of those poll site locations, those early voting locations, and vote there. Or you can vote traditionally in person on Election Day. I will be personally voting in person. I haven't decided if it will be uh, a couple days early uh, or on Election Day. But you have those three options, and uh, because uh, those options uh, we're hopeful that uh, everyone exercises uh, their right to vote. A very consequential election, as most are, but uh, uh, please do participate. And uh, your right to vote is being protected, and the integrity of that vote 
uh, is being as uh, is being secured, and, and believe me, our Board of Elections is working very, very hard. We're good on questions. So what I'd like to do is thank you all. Uh, we're going to be back with you again uh, next week. Uh, try to keep you updated. If there's any additional information that comes our way uh, between now and then, we'll certainly advise you. And again, if you haven't yet completed your census form, please go online. Uh, what I say? <laughs> I'm going to forget now. 2020census.gov. 2020census.gov. We'll put the slide up so that you can see that information above my shoulder. 2020census.gov. If you have not yet completed uh, your census form, please do so. Uh, you can do it online. Otherwise, census workers will have identification. Keep that in mind. They're going door to door. They'll have a face covering or mask on, and uh, they're taking steps to make sure that everyone is counted. So be counted. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us again uh, this afternoon. Uh, in the meantime, stay healthy, uh, be safe, and be kind to each other.